السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اشہد اللہ الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریک له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم وعد الله الذين آمنوا منكم وعملوا الصالحات لا يستخلفنهم في الأرض لا يستخلفنهم في الأرض كما استخلف الذين من قبلهم ولا يمكنن لهم دينهم الذي ارتضى لهم ولا يبدلنهم من بعد خوفهم امنا يعبدونني لا يشركون بي شيئا وَمَن كَفَرَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَأَعْتِيُوا الرَّسُولَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Allah has promised to those among you who believe and do good works that he will surely make them successors in the earth as he made successors from among those who were before them and that he will surely establish for them their religion which he has chosen for them and that he will give he will surely give them in exchange security and peace after their fear they will worship me and they will not associate anything with me then whoso is ungrateful after that they will be the rebellious and observe prayer and give the zakat and obey the messenger that you may be shown mercy chapter 24 verses 56 to 57 of the holy quran the institution of khilafat is god's greatest manifestation on earth and this manifestation of god has exhibited throughout history in all his prophets and through their successors that manifestation in light of god started from the advent of prophet adam alayhi salatu wasalam who was made the first khalifa on earth whom god told the angels to obey and assist in his mission This light and this manifestation of God Almighty then passed through 124,000 prophets and finally settled in the embodiment of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is a true and everlasting khalifatullah. But it didn't stop there. After his demise, this light passed down to the Khulafai Rashidin. And then after the Muslims were engulfed in darkness this divine light manifested itself again in the person of the promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam the Khatamul Khulafa through which the current system of khilafat is being manifested today this ray of light and this ray of hope which traveled throughout the centuries and has guided man connected reunited the creation with the creator and without this manifestation of god man would be lost devoid of guidance and in complete darkness and it it has allowed man to create that missing link with god and establish in a, a relationship with him and this is the topic of my speech today if we look at the current state of the world today what do we see we see that people are divided we see discord and disharmony 
throughout the nations and people are longing for a means of peace and hope. And there remains a void in the Muslim Ummah today that disrupts the world and causes so much of this commotion and chaos that grows and prevents man from connecting with God. But for all of this commotion and all of this unrest that we see, there lies a solution that we can simply hold on to. God Almighty states in chapter 3 that وَأْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّكُوا And hold fast all together by the rope of Allah and be not divided. What is this rope that is thrown down to us by God Almighty that we may hold on to this and we may reach His presence? Hazrat Muslim radiallahu anhu, he states in Dars al-Quran, that listen carefully and remember that Khilafat is the rope of Allah and it is such a rope that you can only progress if you are holding on to this rope. The one who will not hold on to this rope will be destroyed. So in this day and age, the only means to which we can attain that peace within our lives and attain that spiritual sustenance is only through Khilafat and it is this unifying spiritual institution that brings us together and saves us from spiritual deterioration. But the thing is that obedience is the key. Obedience is that thing that will build that connection with God Almighty. The verse that I recited in the beginning was, was the verse of Ayat Istikhlaf in which God promises the believers the blessing of Khilafat. But just before this very verse, God Almighty states in the Holy Quran that قُلْ أَتِئُ اللَّهَ وَأَتِئُ الرَّسُولِ فَإِن تَوَلَّوْ فَإِنَّمَا عَلَيْهِ مَا حُمِّلَ وَعَلَيْكُمْ مَا حُمِلْتُمْ وَإِن تُطِيعُوهُ تَحْتَدُوا وَمَا عَلَى الرَّسُولِ إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينِ Let's say, obey Allah and obey the Messenger. But if you turn away, then upon him is his burden and upon you is your burden. And if you obey him, you will be rightly guided. And the messenger is not responsible but for the plain delivery of the message. Now we find that this verse comes before the verse of Ayat Istikhlaf. And this tells us that just as it is very important to obey Allah, and it is very important to obey His Messenger, it is also very vital and it is also very important to obey Khilafat and by doing so we will be rightly guided and connected to God Almighty but disobedience to it yields a very great burden with which man will go astray. And according to the promise of God laid down in this verse of Ayat Istikhlaf, the institution of Khilafat will strengthen our religion, turn our fears into peace, establish that spirit of worship within us and protect us from shirk. So in obedience to the messenger and obedience to their successors, we see another verse of the Holy Quran which tells us the great benefit of the obedience. In chapter 3, verse 32, it states, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِئُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ That say, if you love Allah, then follow me. Meaning the example of the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Then will Allah love you and forgive you your sins. And Allah is most forgiving and merciful. So it is through the obedience of the Messenger and adhering to the example of the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam that one can find the love of God, which is the ultimate goal for all of us. You know, the promised Messiah wasallam, he states that I say truly with personal experience that no one can do good and achieve the pleasure of God and inherit the blessings and the provisions 
and the spiritual visions that come with the highest level of self-reformation until he, until he does not keep himself in the path and in the way of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. Now what is the path? What is the guidance that the Holy Prophet ﷺ gives to us that can lead us into the numerous spiritual treasures? The Holy Prophet ﷺ gives us guidance and he says, is narrated in Tirmizi that alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al khulafai al rashidin al mahdiyin that the obedience of my sunnah is obligatory upon you and the sunnah of the khulafa and the mahdi so in actuality the obedience of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the obedience of the mahdi and the obedience of his successors so we can then conclude that the obedience of the Khulafa will surely yield the love of Allah and develop a bond and relationship with God Almighty. The Holy Prophet ﷺ further guides us. And he states, فَإِن رَيْتَ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ خَلِيفَةُ اللَّهِ فِي الْأَرْزِ فَالْزِمْهُ وَإِن نُهِكَ جِسْمُكَ وَأُخِزَ مَالُكَ That if you witness and see the Khalifa on earth, then you should attach yourself with him completely. Even though your body is torn apart and your wealth is taken away from you. Now this is the degree to which the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam has instructed us to obey the man of God, the Khalifa of Allah, that we make such sacrifices for him. But what also yields a great benefit of this obedience and what are the differences that we can see within ourselves in the community of the Promised Messiah alayhi salatu was salam as a Muslim Allahu anhu. He gives a very profound uh, point on this under the commentary of Ayat al-Sikhlaf. He says, what is the difference between the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the Muslims of today? It is only this that companions were under a system. And because of this, they had reached the pinnacle of obedience to the Prophet. For example, whenever the Prophet would issue any order, the companions would immediately stand ready to fulfill the command. Although the spirit of obedience of the Prophet is not evident among the Muslims of today, but the Muslims will pray five daily prayers. They will keep the fast and they will perform the Hajj. But they do not possess the essence of obedience of the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam, because such obedience cannot be established without a system. Therefore, whenever Khilafat will be present, obedience of the Prophet will be present. Because obedience of the Prophet isn't simply offering the Salat, keeping the fast or performing Hajj. This is obedience to God's commandments. The obedience to the Holy Prophet Muhammad ﷺ is in fact this, that when he instructs that, that now is the time to focus on prayers and everyone focuses on prayers. And when he instructs that you must focus on zakat, then you must focus on paying chanda. Then everyone turns their full focus on zakat and paying chanda. And when he says that there is a need for sacrificing ourselves, or there is a need of sacrifice by way of migration, then everyone stands ready to sacrifice themselves and their place of residence. In other words, these three things are such that are fortified and connected with Khilafat. If there is no Khilafat, then Allah Almighty states that your prayers will deteriorate, your zakat will disappear, and the core of your obedience to the Prophet will diminish within your heart. Since our community is under the practice of following this system, that is why individuals of Jamaat possess the core of obedience in themselves. That is why if today, individuals of our Jamaat were taken back to the time of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu they would exhibit the same spirit of obedience 
as was shown by the companions themselves. Although if you imagine a non-Ahmadi Muslim, in that same era of the Prophet, you will find such a person constantly stumbling along every step of the way while constantly asking to slow down because he isn't able to understand the wisdom behind various commandments of the Prophet. In the same fashion, he will begin to deny certain things and he will begin to neglect them. But if you were to take an Ahmadi Muslim to that same era, he wouldn't feel the slightest sense of being in an unfamiliar territory. He would be as though a part of a machine that is placed immediately with ease in its exact place. And he would go immediately <coughs> to the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam and become his companion. The Kabir, page 369. So this is the great benefit of the obedience to that blessed institution of Khilafat. Because it makes us like the companions of the time of the Holy Prophet Muhammad ﷺ who were ready to do anything because they were under a system. And without this system, a person's spiritual capacity deteriorates and it keeps him from connecting and building that relationship with God. The promised Messiah والسلام, states that obedience is such an act that if a person truly practices it with a sincere heart, then light progresses within his heart and his soul develops a pleasure and illumination. Mujahidat or meditation efforts are not as important compared to the importance of obedience. And sometimes we have certain instructions and directives from Madkas that are issued from Khalifatul Masih and we fail to give the importance it needs. And we consider our current plan to take precedence or that it should be implemented first before anything. But when we put aside the directives of hazur anwar then we misunderstand the actual meaning of Khilafat. As a Muslim, he actually gives us the meaning to Khilafat. He states that the meaning of Khilafat is this, that when, he, when any word is uttered by the Khalifa, when any word is uttered by the Khalifa, at that time all schemes and all suggestions and all plans should be discarded. And it should be understood that only the scheme and the su suggestion and the plan which Khalifatul Masih calls us towards is beneficial. And when this spirit is not inculcated in the Jamaat, then all sermons and all schemes and all plans are useless. <laughs> We have seen throughout history that those who were obedient to Khilafat, Allah blessed them immensely and increased their stature like no other. One such person was Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmad radiallahu anhu, who showed utmost obedience even at a young age. Hazrat Khalifatul Masih Awwal radiallahu anhu, he states, that Mia Mahmud is mature now. And you can ask him if he is truly obedient. But I know full well myself that he is truly obedient to me and none of you are as obedient as him. This obedience of Khilafat grew in him more and more until one day God had placed the mantle of Khilafat upon him. And later he became al muslim Maud, the promised reformer who was prophesied by prophets. Now this is the blessing that comes with the obedience to Khilafat that God becomes so close to you and so dear to you that He showers His grace and His bounty upon those who follow His dear ones. And we see this with all the other Khulafa, all the other successors that they had the utmost obedience to their Khalifa Vakt and God had bestowed upon him the fuzzle and the grace. Then there are others who had 
the blessing of having a very profound and personal relationship with God by way of revelation, by visions, by immediate acceptance of prayers. They, they would put up their hands and immediately they would know by God Almighty that their prayers were accepted. That was the level of the, the relationship that they had with God Almighty. But when they had accepted the promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam, and the khulafa, that spirituality in them grew, and they became like saints. This was the case with Hazrat Ghulam Rasul Rajiki sahab radiyallahu anhu. It is narrated about him by Hazrat Masood Ahmad radiyallahu anhu. I will read in Urdu first. Aap aksar farmaya karte the, main to ek aajiz insan hu. Ye sab to fazilat jo aap logon ko nazar aate hain. سیدنا حضرت اقدس مسیح مہود علیہ السلام کے ساتھ محبت اور عقیدت اور خلفاء سلسلہ آلی احمدیہ کی کامل اطاعت اور فرما برداری کا نتیجہ ہے آپ اپنی مجالس میں بڑی کسرت سے یہ فرمایا کرتے تھے کہ اگر اپنے مقصد میں کامیاب ہونا چاہتے ہو اگر اپنے مقصد میں کامیاب ہونا چاہتے ہو تو سیدنا حضرت خلیفت المسیح اید اللہ تعالی کی خدمت میں دعا کی درخواست پر مشتمل خطوط باقاعدگی سے ارسال کیا کرو اور پھر اللہ تعالیٰ کے حضور دعاؤں میں لگے رہو خلیفہ کا آسمانی وجود ایک پاور ہاؤس ہے اور اس سے تعلق محبت اور عقیدت قائم کیے بغیر آپ لوگ خدا تعالیٰ کے فضلوں کے وارث نہیں بن سکتے لوگ مجھ سے دعا کے لیے کہتے ہیں میں دعا کر دیتا ہوں اگر خدا تعالیٰ کے دائمی فیض کے وارث بننا چاہتے ہو تو خلیفہ وقت کی دعاؤں کو اپنے آپ کو مورد بناؤ اور خود دعائیں کرنا اپنی عادت بنا لو تاکہ خدا تعالیٰ کے دائمی فضلوں کو جذب کرنے والے بن سکو میں نے خود آپ کو یہ کہتے ہوئے سنا کہ مجھے خدا تعالیٰ کی طرف سے تنبی ہوتی رہتی ہے کہ میں اپنی اور دوسروں کی حاجت براری کے لیے خلیفہ وقت سے دعاؤں کی درخواست کرتا رہوں حضرت مسعود احمد رضی اللہ عنہ اسٹیٹس ان آرٹیکل الفضل دیٹ حضرت غلام رسول رجیکی صاحب رضی اللہ عنہ اسٹیٹڈ دیٹ آئی ایم جسٹ اے ہمبل ون آل دی اسپرچل بلیسنگز یو سی بیفور یو آر آر دا ریزلٹ آف دا لو and the nearness that I kept with the promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam and are the result of the complete obedience I had with khilafat e Ahmadiyya. He further stated that if you want to be successful in your endeavors, then you should continuously write letters to Khalifat al-Masih asking for prayers, then pray for yourself. The heavenly existence of a Khalifa is a powerhouse. And without having a relationship with it, you cannot be the recipients of the fuzzle and that grace of God. People request me to pray for them and I do pray for them. But if you wish to be everlasting inheritors of the blessings of God, then you should always try to receive the prayers of Khalifa Tul Masih and make a habit of praying for yourself so that you can be the one to absorb the limitless fuzzle of God Almighty. In another instance, we see a great example of the obedience that he had to Khilafat. Hazrat Ghulam Rasul Rajiki Sahib Raziyallahu Anhu once had an ardent desire to build a house in Qadiyan. And he didn't have enough resources, he didn't have enough money to do so. So he prayed for some time. And he saw in his vision, he had a vision, and he saw Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam descend upon him. And he knew right away that this this task that he was going to do was going to be a very successful endeavor. So he collected some money 
and started the process for the construction of this house in Qadian. After some, after some time, the construction needed more resources and the construction halted. So he borrowed some money from Hazrat Irfani Sahib Allahu Anhu as a loan. And he finished the house. And right away, Hazrat Ghulam Rasul Rajiki Sahib Allahu Anhu, he thought that I should give back the money immediately before he forgot afterwards. But he didn't have the money and the resources to do so. He started praying again. And he said that I prayed in the month of Ramadan and he narrates himself that when I prayed earnestly in the month of Ramadan to return the debt, eight days had passed while praying consistently. And God had revealed to me in these exact words. God had revealed to him in these exact words that agar tu chahta hai ke tera karza jald utar jaye to khalifatul masih ki duaon ko bhi shamil kar le that if you wish your debt to be removed quickly that include the prayers of khalifatul masih now what a profound way for god almighty to remind his close ones that even though someone might have a personal and profound relationship with god almighty in exceptional ways it is ultimately through the institution of Khilafat that one can achieve their goals and have their prayers accepted and build that complete relationship with God. And this is the message that we need to take back with us today and carry forth to our future generations. That our success and our progress and our relationship with God is solely dependent on the institution of Khilafat. Because Khilafat is the living representation of God on earth and adhering to His words is adhering to the words of God. And I will conclude my speech with the wise words of the man of God Himself, Hazrat Khalifatul Masih Al-Khamis Ayyad Allah Ta'ala bin Asil Aziz. And he states, Allah has set time periods of each Khalifa of Jamaat Ahmadiyya. They provide guidance according to the time period and guide us on the issues of the time. Thus, when a period finishes, and a new Khalifa is elected, and Allah Almighty bestows us with Khilafat again, then you must follow whatever guidance He gives, not by publishing old books, even though informative knowledge is gained, and it should be published, but practically. It is important to listen to the Khalifa of the time and act upon his instructions rather than questioning the meaning of various guidances that he gives. He says, if each member of the Jamaat is obedient, we will head towards spiritual heights and our faith will be as strong as mountains. And as a result, the message of Islam will spread in all directions of the world. And I pray that may Allah enable us all to heed the directives and the guidance of hazur e Anwar to the best of our abilities so that we can establish that true relationship with Allah. I pray that may Allah enable us to do so.